Welcome everybody, we've got a video here on replacing a clutch cable in a 1996 Dodge Neon, first generation. Uh, you can see I'm removing something here called a power control module where a lot of the circuitry is, it sits on the back of the battery there. Now what I'm going to show you here is applicable not just for the Neon, but for a lot of passenger cars. So you can see down below that PCM module, we've got the cable coming in to the transmission that's supposed to go, you can see the flywheel there, and I'm pointing at a little cable that snapped off. There's a disc at the end of that thing that I'm holding, there should be, that connects to a fork right behind it, which I'm pointing at right now. Unfortunately, that disc broke off because this thing's about 20 years old. And so what happens, you put down the clutch pedal, it doesn't pull back on that fork and the clutch doesn't engage. And so you wind up with nothing, unfortunately. So we're gonna replace this cable, get things back to square. It's not that hard to do. You can see I'm pointing to the section that goes into the firewall. You notice a little spring at the end of it. That controls the tension on the clutch cable. So we're gonna pull that whole thing out, put in a new cable, we have a lot of fun doing this. Again, this is applicable not just for a Neon, but for all sorts of passenger cars. So stick around if you want to learn how to do this. If this happens to you. All right, we're under the dash now. You can see the pedal there just sort of, that's the clutch pedal, just sort of flopping around. Well, that's because the cable's broken. So we're going to crawl under here. Oh, man, this is tough under here. Sorry about the shaky camera work, but it's very close quarters in here. Now, you notice I'm pushing the clutch pedal down. If I can get there, you see a cylinder, a black cylinder moving back and forth at the top of the screen. And you can see at the end of the cable, the very end of the cable there, as I'm moving it, pulling out, there it is. And pushing back in. I'm trying to show the cable there. So that's connected to the clutch pedal using that black cylinder. And if you can just see, there's a little, I know this is tough, I'm sorry. Let me just zero in again on what we're looking at here. So I move this thing back and forth. You can see the pedal is connected to this black bit here. And you can see it's connected using a little cotter pin. I can't even point to this. I'm sorry. It's so tight in here. There's a cotter pin connected to the pedal that's connected to this black thing going back and forth. I know that's very technical, isn't it? That's connected to the cable. We've got to undo all this. Uh, it's going to be a little tough to show as I do it again because I can only get one hand in here at a time. So it's tough, uh, tough fitting, but we'll get it working. Just want to give you a quick preview of what it looks like underneath the dash. Okay, here's another angle. I'm under the dash on my back, <laughs> losing blood rapidly to my head. So you can see that cotter pin. Right there, we got to get that thing out. And then this, sorry, the whole thing's one hand. This black ah, plastic part that's moving back and forth will come out. So I move the clutch pedal. Sorry about this. But you see that thing, we're going to hook a screwdriver in there. Hopefully pull it out without too much trouble. And then this black bit here should come off without a lot of trouble here. So we'll find it. Ah. Okay, we got that cotter pin out. Now let's see what we've got again. Sorry about the close quarters. You see that's out now. It's Notice that little cylinder, that little pin that was sticking through the end of this black cylinder. That's been slid, slid out. So now all we have to do is disconnect the cable from this thing. And then we'll be able to start pulling things out of the firewall. Okay, we got that bracket out of the way, which is also known as an upstop spacer in technical terms. And you can see the end of the clutch cable there with a little cylindrical lozenge there. That sort of fits into that spacer, that black bracket. Um, it's easy to take off, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but we managed to do it. You notice that space in there, it just sort of slides in there and hooks on. Uh, nothing fancy going on with that. So easy enough to take off, although we had close quarters to do it. All right, we've disconnected the clutch pedal. Now we can pull it through the firewall. Uh, you can see the spring there that, again, adjusts the tension. The key here is just to pull that thing out. It, it's not latched in any way. You just got to give it a few good gentle tugs. Firm, but, but gentle. You don't want to go crazy and just start yanking like a madman. So right now I'm just trying to get the lay of the land. Unfortunately, this is a two-hand job, so I'm not going to be able to show you how I do this, pulling it out while holding the camera in the other hand, but it's basically just tugging back and forth. All right, success. We got it through. Again, just a little pulling. You can see the cylindrical lozenge there that hooked into the clutch shed, that black bracket. Uh, pulling this out wasn't that difficult. Two hands, definitely, and we went back and forth gently, nudged it out. You can see the hole to the firewall there. No big deal. Now you can see the end of the other cable. We're going to remove this thing from here. We're going to route it through carefully and just get the lay of the land on that now. Okay, here we go. So we're just right now what I'm doing, and this is for any car, not just the, I'm, I'm checking to see where this thing's routed, what wires it's going under so that when I put it back in, I don't have any problem. These, you know, all these cars are so crammed in. You just have to get the spacing and all that exactly right. Otherwise you'll have a nightmare job. All right, the cable's out, the old one, and I've got the new one in here. I'm just doing a quick comparison of the lengths of these guys, making sure everything's good. And you can see the black bracket, that upstop bracket, has the its own cylindrical end installed from the from the uh, cable, so that fit okay. Notice also, this is what snapped off on the old one, that disc with the rubber 
grommet and then another disc those hook into that fork and that stuff snapped off so that's sitting at the bottom <laughs> of the uh, clutch somewhere um, I understand that's actually there's some space down there so that I could sit so it's not a huge problem I'd love to get it out but I don't want to remove the clutch either to do it but you can see that's what snapped off on the old cable right there yeah that's missing so you can understand that why that would be a problem so we'll get this going again I'm just checking uh, the lengths of these cables making sure things are in good shape and we'll take it from there, so um, stick around. All right, before we go on, I want to do a quick PSA. I didn't have any luck installing that first item, that first cable right there. It wouldn't reach all the way. It wasn't, it's not that it wasn't long enough, it just couldn't pull back. You notice the difference below that, I've got a new one from Mopar, in my case, Chrysler Direct. The one at the top doesn't have a spring, it has a couple of set screws and a rubber boot that I'm pointing out there. You try to set that up. It didn't reach. I couldn't fit into the fork and pull it back enough. There's no, it, it, it's close, but it didn't work out. It actually wasn't all that close. So instead I went, paid a little more, actually considerably more, and got the real one down below from Chrysler that has a spring that you can pull back. So the lesson here I'm trying to say, cheap OEM cables, uh, they're not worth it. I spent a day or so filming, trying to get that one at the top to work. It didn't work. We're going to send it back. We're going to use the one at the bottom. So just... You know, pay a little more and get the real spring, the real cable, and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. Okay, so we got the cable pushed through. Uh, no big secret there. Just push it in through, giving it some pressure, nothing too crazy, and it'll slot in and fit in pretty good. There's no lock. It's, it just sort of just sort of shove it in there, and um, that's it. All right, we're back under the dash. You can see we've got the black bracket, the upstop spacer sitting right there. We've got to put that into that cylindrical lozenge at the top, the end of the cable. And as you know, in the bracket, there are a couple of, there's a slot you can put that in with room for the cable. So unfortunately, I can't show you because it's so close quarters here. I can't do this. I have to do this with one hand. I can't do it and hold the camera, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. All right, we got the cable installed to the bracket. Uh, boy, is this thing even going to focus? Let's see. Uh, if I can pull this out, it's so tight in here. You can see the cable is slotted in there. There you go. That lozenge is hooked in there. Now we have to hook it onto the clutch pedal itself and at the end of that bracket it slides on the little uh, pin you see at the top there we're going to move the clutch pedal space things out get that thing on there all right next step we got to take the end of the cable and put it into the fork in the transmission so you see we've got to put it through there we got to slide slot the cable to that little slot you see that slit and put the end of the disc in that fork at the very top right there so we'll get started on that this is what killed me on the oem cable hopefully it'll work better this time all right, we're so close. You can see the cables put through that slot. The disc at the end of the fork. I pulled this thing with the spring as much as I can. So close. I'm going to take a little end of a screwdriver, the plastic end, and just pound that so I can get that rubber end to fit into its slot. Beautiful. We're all set. Cables in place. Slotted into the fork. Fine. Clutch pedal feels great. We're all done here. Now what you have to do is just button things up. I want to thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope this helps you with your own clutch cable issues if they come up. Thanks again, and always don't go with OEM cables.